Today we're making vintage Halloween decor. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first project, we're going to make a skeleton swag. Using some Dollar Tree Christmas trees, some ribbon, some deco mesh, some deco tubing, a yard pick, some ornaments, some of these floral picks. And that's just to start with. You know, I'm always adding stuff. So we're going to start by taking the trees out of the box, taking the bases off. We're going to turn them around so their ends are facing and using two zip ties, we're going to attach these together. If you don't have zip ties, you can use floral wire, you can use jute, whatever you want to use, just get them really tight. Clip off the excess because we're not going to need those showing. And then you're going to start pulling these out. I would normally call this fluffing them up, but since they're going to be flat on one side and you're just going to be pulling everything out to the sides, you can call this whatever you want it. We are arranging it then. So now it actually looks like a 2D Christmas tree. That's kind of how it's going to look. You're going to pull those out to the side. You can reach underneath and pull those out to the side. Sometimes two of them will be very close together, so just be sure you separate them. They're kind of um, thin. You know, the little branches are thin, so just be sure that you pull each little segment apart. And on the end, it does have a longer piece. Do that on both sides. We're going to go over to the yard sign now and just press down and pull the stand off. All right, I'm going to layer up some deco mesh. I have some that I thrifted, so I don't know how much it is, and then some from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut these in nine inch pieces. So we're gonna need 24 nine inch pieces of the stripes, and we're going to need 12 nine inch pieces of the black. Now we're gonna roll these. They're just gonna make little, look like little burritos. We're just gonna roll them. Just gonna roll them right over little curls, just like this. And we're going to stack those together, a black, and then two of the colored ones, just like that. You can use your little clips and hold them together as you assemble your bundles. So you will have 12 bundles. Continue along. You can see if you don't want to hold it or if you're at the beginning of your roll, it won't be as tightly wound. But when you get closer to that little paper segment in the middle, then um, the rolls will be tighter. There you go. So after we've got all of those assembled, we can take them off the clip and start putting them down on the base. I'm going to start on the end and just push it down in there, wrap this around, and then there we have the first piece down. I'm going to go to the opposite end and do the same thing. Now you can lay your pieces down any way you want. But going from end to end, I'm making sure that I keep my patterns the same because that's how my mind works. But if you want to start at one end and go all the way down, you can certainly do that. I just want to be sure that I have enough for both ends and that they're evenly spaced. And so doing it this way is helpful to me in my mind in making sure that everything is where it should be. While we are putting this together, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. It seems like lots and lots of people are interested in the Halloween decor, and I am very grateful for that because my heart is in fall and winter crafting, and I think that, um, I think it shows. Um, I just really have a lot of passion for that, and so I like to do it, and I'm glad that you like to see it being done so that I can share with you all the things that I like and then you can pick and choose what it is that you want to do that you see me do and change things up like I say make it my own that's what you want to do you want to make it your own and um, you don't have to go overboard you really don't and some things sometimes I think people get kind of backwards with how they think about things they think oh it's too hard there's no way I can do it it's not hard. Some things just take a little more time to do. You know, it's not a fast thing here. It takes a little more time to do it. But you'll get it. You can do it. So now let's go back to that sign. We're going to use a pipe cleaner on the back. 
or chenille stem, whichever way you prefer to call it. I'm gonna add some hot glue and just roll it around in there and then using a little piece of cardboard scrap, I just put it over there to help kind of secure it in place so we don't pull it off while we're attaching it. I'm gonna put it on the front side and then pull those pipe cleaners through and wrap it around the base. Or that kind of that middle section, the um, branchy part, the wired part of that tree. You flip it back over and it looks nice. Now, when you're doing that, if you tighten it too tight, it's gonna sink down and press your, the sign down into it. You don't want that. You want it to look like it's floating above there, right? That gives a better look. And so now we're gonna add those picks. That's so easy to do. You're just gonna slide them in that little space where it's attached in the back, just slide those branches right in there. If you can't find these at your Dollar Tree, just go get a stick out of the yard and spray paint it. Easy enough, right? A little black spray paint, perfect. Okay, so for this tubing, I think I called it deco tubing, but I'm not really sure what it is. You're just going to take this and overlap it over and over and over again. And I think I end up with like five loops on each side. You can see it's really easy, not a big deal. Kind of fluffing it out to see what I've got. I think it is five. And then when I get enough on both sides, I'm gonna make it kind of, you know, thick and bunchy and I'm gonna trim it off. Then I'm going to take another little section to just secure it, you know, tied around the middle so that everything stays together. Really easy to do. I got mine thrifted, but you can definitely find this type of thing at Dollar Tree. It might not be black and white, but you can definitely find it there. It doesn't really matter what color it is, right? Because you're going to do your own thing. You don't have to copy exactly what I have, right? And I love this. That is a cute little bow, right? All right, so now I'm just going to take a floral pick, a little extra stick that I had. It might have been one, one of those little pumpkins we're on because it's wood. Yeah, that might be what it came from. And I'm just going to push it through the back of that knot, which is really tight. So it's secure there, but you can add a little cool temp glue there if you wanted to, or some super glue to hold it in place. You don't want anything melting. And then I'm just going to feed it down behind and it's going to stick right down in that frame. Then I'm going to add some hot glue to the back in the same situation as before. Take a little scrap paper or cardboard and put over the top of the glue spots. That way you can secure it and continue on with your project rather than waiting for that to dry. Okay, you can fluff out your little curls a little bit and then start adding down whatever type of ornaments you want. You can use table scatter here. You can use the little miniature pumpkins here if you want to. You can use any color in any size that you like. And these little mini ornaments are perfect. To me, in my opinion, they're perfect for this. I'm just going to add these here and there in the little rolls and also in the branch to give a little more interest. Like decorating a Christmas tree. You just put them here and there, wherever you like them. Now I want to make him a bow tie because he looks regal to me with that top hat. So we're going to make a bow tie. I'm just going to use some of this darker orange ribbon. This actually came from the fall section in Dollar Tree. I'm going to bunch it in the middle. Real easy. You can see how I do that. And then while I'm making the centerpiece, I'm just going to clip it together. I'm going to roll this over and flatten it. This is going to go over the center of the bow. So you're just going to place it on the front, flip it over. You got to kind of manipulate it just a bit to make sure you get the placement right. And then adding a little bit of glue. Protect your fingers. Protect your fingers. Press this down and then clamp it in place so that it can dry. Now what I'm doing now is I added some hot glue in the hole up there and I'm just covering it with some black, um, with a black marker. So it kind of fades into the back and you don't see the hole so much. Now to put his bow tie on, I'm gonna use a craft stick glue it on and then we're just going to glue it right to the back of the sign. Perfect. It almost looks like it's floating there now. So I mixed up a little dark orange paint to go over this glitter because I noticed that the glitter was kind of um, sparse in some areas and it just gave it kind of a cheap look and I want to give it a little bit of a more of a high-end look, you know. So I'm just going to go over it with that paint and 
make it look solid and the same color and I think it looks great. It's almost exactly the same color as his bow tie. Then we're going to go around here with a little bit of this trim just around the hat band. Look at that pop. I am so excited to be crafting with Annie from Indiana Jones. We are doing this video collaboration together because we both have a deep and abiding love for Halloween. So this is her channel. I love her content. She is very creative. She does lots of fun things and she has in the past and now been a huge supporter of other creators in the community. This is my favorite project that she has done. Why she didn't get more views on this video, I will never know, but you have got to go watch this video. If you love vintage, you'll love it. Next project is a jack-o'-lantern round. Taking another one of those vintage looking yard signs from Dollar Tree. I've got the little pumpkin guy here and I'm going to use a wood round that I th thrifted. Somebody else had done something on there. I'm going to pop the back off just like that. I'm going to use a little tape on the back and then fill in the hole. This is the same process that I used on the skeleton. I sanded this down so now it is actually round. It was kind of um, cut kind of rough but now it's nice and round, nice and smooth on the front. I'm going to take my painter's tape and I got mine from Dollar Tree. I have had no problem with my painter's tra tape from Dollar Tree so I do recommend it. And I'm just going to mark a line off. I'm not measuring down. I'm only going to be measuring our center section. So we're going to have about five inches in the middle. This is just my preference. Again, you can do anything you want. You don't even have to have three stripes. You could just do two or you could just do, you know, whatever you want to do. You could paint this one solid color if you wanted. So now I'm just trying to choose which orange is the best fit for this pumpkin. And we'll be using a creamy white and we're going to use Mod Podge and black. Using a little bit of Mod Podge, I'm going to go over that inside marked area right along the edge across the tape and be sure that we don't have any bleeding of our paint, you know, into the other section. I want it to be nice and crisp. So now I'm just mixing my paint and I used a little bit of Harvest Orange and some brown together and this is close enough to me. So I'm going to take that color after my Mod Podge is dry and I'm going to go over that entire middle section. Now this paint, for whatever reason, was a little bit thinner than the black and the cream color that I used. So I had to use three coats of paint on this. Totally fine with that. I love painting. Uh, not a problem for me. You can use a blow dryer or a heating tool of some type to dry in between your layers if you are, you know, concerned about timing. So I always like to give you those little tips in there that will help you out. No excuses. We sit down to craft, we craft. Okay, so this is how it looks. And while my paint is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and take this paint tape off. So I want to show you what I discovered. I'm so excited about this. The little nail file from Dollar Tree that I've been using to sand with easily takes off marks that are on the wood. These didn't even come off when I was using my big sander, but it easily erased the little black marks that were had remained on there, which is great because you can do the same thing. You don't have to throw it out. You can still use it. Isn't that perfect? Be sure when you are sanding though that you wipe down your surfaces and get all that dust off because you will have dust as you can see on that paper towel. You will have that left and you don't want to muddy up your tape, your paint rather. So once everything is dry here on that middle section, I'm going to take my painter's tape and carefully go down and make sure that I am over my edge so everything's nice and crisp and I'm just going to lightly press it down and then rub it down in place once I get it exactly where it needs to be. Same process, I'm going to use the Mod Podge and go over that edge just to make sure that it is sealed and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Seal it up. I love Mod Podge. All right, using Jet Black, we're going to add some down on my board, and I'm just going to squeeze a little bit on there. If you get too much, it's not a problem. You just scoop it off, open the top, and just scrape it back into the bottle. I do it all the time. Just going to go along here, making nice, smooth 
swipes with your paintbrush. Now, one thing I might like to add here at this point is, if you don't use a roller, and I know a lot of people use a little roller for this, if you don't have a roller, you can achieve a nice smooth look if you make sure that your final swipes across your paint are nice, long, even swipes. That's going to make it nice and um, thick, and you don't have a bunch of brush marks in it. So this is like a, I think this is like an antique white. So it's just a little bit of a cream color and it is a absolutely beautiful color. I think that this suits the sort of the vintage look. Look at that y'all, only one coat of the white and one coat of that black. And then once it dried, we peeled off the tape and I used my, um, no, it wasn't quite dry. I peeled the tape off, then I dried it with my little heat tool. That's what I did. And look how great those colors look together. Love it. You could also do candy corn colors if you wanted. So I'm going to go around the little welcome part of that sign and I'm just going to use a black acrylic marker to go around the edges. And I do the same thing on the little pumpkin guy so you don't see any of that little um, particle board or MDF or whatever that is. And this is going to give it an, a very nice, more expensive look. I'm just using my little clamps down there as a space uh, holder so that I know exactly where to put this back down but you can measure if you want to um, and mark on it and then erase the marks whichever way you like to do it is absolutely fine more than one ways to skin a cat right definitely okay that's an old saying y'all I'm not trying to offend anybody by saying that I love cats and I would never do that then we're going to put the little welcome sign down same way and I'm just using my little um insulators down there just to hold it because they're heavy and it helps hold things in place sometimes these little signs kind of bend and uh, i'm just making sure that they don't bend away and cause a gap where my glue is so i'm cutting 12 inch pieces of ribbon here and i'm using an orange black polka dot some smaller polka dot and then another small polka dot i like this this just looks like it looks festive and you know i just like it but you use whatever you like. If you've got something with pumpkins on it, certainly use that. I'm trying to use what I've got, though. So we're making a little sort of a messy bow here, and we're just going to layer it and go over and over. Just making X's. Make an X with each color. And then I'll start off by putting these down. Now, I wanted these to be a little bit shorter because they don't have wire in them, and they'll kind of flop. So I made those two inches shorter than the long ones. And then I remembered I had this mesh ribbon a little bit left. So I took this mesh and added that on and then I put my smaller pieces back on top. It just gives it a little something extra and I really like it. It's a little more interest I think. So just taking a thin piece of black ribbon, I'm going to lay it on the table, flip over my bow, and then I'm going to tie it in a few knots to hold it in place. You can definitely use um, something else to tie your bow you can use a zip tie here you can use a chanel stem you can use floral wire you can use a bread tie if you're just down to it and you don't have anything else to use you certainly can use a bread tie it's wire isn't it it would work so my bow is my uh, ribbon back there is tied in a very tight knot and i'm just going to fluff a little bit trim it off and then we're going to add it to the top you can do the top you can do the side whatever you like, but I put it right in the center top because I want to add one extra thing. I'm going to use my little clamp here to hold it till it dries as I fluff a little bit on my bow. And I'm just bending out the ones that have wire. And this helps give the bow a little more body, a little more dimension. It kind of lifts it up from the surface and it's just a pretty look, I think. So now we're going to lace some beads. I just use a little bit of hot glue on my jute, twist it, got a nice little point on there, and then we'll be able to add some beads on. Now I have some orange and black and they match pretty well to this, I think. Pretty good. I'm going to add those onto the string just like so, and then I will go down the rope just a little bit and tie a knot because this is going to be our hanger for the back. Trim it off, what you don't need. And then we're going to add this to the back. It's a good fit. A little bit of ribbon over that glue is going to hold that in place and it will look nice. 
You can trim it off if you want, but if you want to use it in another project, just leave it and you can pull it off later. And this is how this beautiful wood round turned out. I love him and I cannot wait to hang this up. So cute. Now we're going to do some beware boots. I'm going to use these little Dollar Tree signs that come in a two pack. I just need one. Got some chalkboard paint, some wooden blocks and bits, a Christmas sign from Dollar Tree, and some thrifted boots. I cut this off of a Santa Claus thing. It was like a Santa Claus hanger and I knew I needed those boots so that I could use them for a witch. I'm going to just cover this in the paint and I'm going to do the front, the back, the ends, just cover the whole thing. There was a piece of rope there that you just saw me cover. Um, so I'm covering that up to try to make that disappear. I had to cut it off really, really close to that. It was just like glued in there and there was no way to just pull it out. So I had to work with it. As my boots are drying, I am going to plug the little hole in the back. We all know how to do this. Same thing as I've done before. Now you know exactly what to do. I'm going to use the remaining paint that's on that little sponge brush to go around my edges. And now I get to decorate the boots. Now all I did for this was pull up a picture on Google of witch's boots. And I saw this pretty pattern. So I'm not going to claim this pattern. I did not create it. I'm going to give the creator credit. However, there was no name, so I don't know who created it. But I didn't do it. I just used it as inspiration. Okay? So now I'm just looking at it on my iPad and I am tracing it here on my boots. These are like a Victorian witch's boot. There's so many options and so many different ways. If you don't like this, you could use something of your own design. You could use something completely different or you could just leave them black. Or maybe paint something else on them or put some beads on them or put some lace on them. Whatever you want to do. So now this is kind of like an eyelet um, pattern that I'm doing around here. This is how it was in the picture, and I'm just using that same pattern. Going around, I'm going to do the same thing on the other boot. And now I'm going to start putting the little lines in here where the buttons would be attached. And believe it or not, just by eyeballing this, when I did both boots, I had exactly the same amount of lines. I did not mess it up or have to erase it. It was a miracle. I think there's 13 of them. Okay, so now I am going to be using a gold paint pen. And I am just going to go over the lines where I penciled it in. And then once everything's dry, you can go back and erase it. But I didn't even bother doing that. It was totally fine. Use whatever type of a paint pen you have. This one works really well. And I had two options, so I tried them on the back of the block to see which one was the best coverage, and this is the one that I preferred. My other gold pen had a kind of a green tint to it. It just really wasn't very bright or pretty. And we want her to be beautiful, right? So now she has nice, beautiful... You know what I think about witches and how they need to be beautiful. That's right. So look how cute this is so far. Do the same thing on both boots, and now we're gonna draw on the buttons. And all I'm doing is making little circles here to make the buttons. And I'm trying to keep my lines even so it actually looks like they are lined up like they would be on a Victorian boot. Look at that. Yes. Yes, girl. Okay, so now we're gonna get, I'm um, gonna have a little bit of dry brushing on this sign because I want to bring that gold in. You know, you want everything to look cohesive and well blended and intentional. So I'm just using a very tiny bit here and then I go back over it a few more times till I get the coverage I like. This beware sign, you can get in a three pack at Dollar Tree and I couldn't find the rest of them. I don't know what I did with them. So I'm repurposing this that was on a different project from a few years ago. I'm going to dry brush over some gold over that orange let it dry and then I'm going to go back over it with brown and this is just plain old brown there's no specific name to it just brown and I'll add that until I get the coverage I like and I love that look beautiful I colored my blocks black and we're just going to add those to the back of the boot 
so it has a better base to hold down and to its um, that sign that's going to be on the bottom is going to be our main base and then a little block here because we don't want that showing through we want it to look like it's floating there right and it stands up and it's wonderful look at that perfection so now that I've got my placement I know where I want them. I'm gonna go ahead and add my hot glue and put those down on the sign I'm lining the block up all the way with the edge so the toes of the boots are actually kind of extended over the edge of the sign. That's just my preference, but you can do it however you want. And you can get little witch's boots and stuff from Dollar Tree. They won't look exactly the same as mine, but you get the idea. Get the inspiration and then do it your way, right? Make it your own. I'm going to add some hot glue on here and right on the tips because I know it will overlap on the boots and help make it secure. Then I'll just sit it down and hold it in place for a moment. So far, so good. Now we got Beware the Witches in. I like that. I'm going to add some glue under it. And then we're going to add a little glue on the top. You can use little pieces of paper to go on top of that like I did just to give it a little more security because metal likes to pop off. And then go ahead and paint that black so everything will blend in. And I'm going to take some of these rings that I have used in a thousand crafts this, this fall. Love them. And I'm just going to cut the ring part off and I'm going to add these little jeweled spiders here and there. I'm going to put one up there near the witch. It's going to look like there are little spiders crawling around, right? I'll put one under this boot. And then one over here crawling up the boot. Love it. I love it. What a cute sign. And it'll fit perfectly in a narrow space, maybe in front of a TV or on a shelf. Here are three projects that we did that are vintage. And I do believe that you can do these projects. Are they hard? Absolutely not. Maybe a little more time consuming than a five minute craft. But if you're willing to put the time in, I promise you, you can come up with something just like this. Or close enough. You know what I mean. Do it your way, certainly. And I added a little spider up there on the skeleton's hat, too. Just a little black spider. Just like that. If you are over here from Annie's channel, I want to give you a big welcome and say thank you for stopping by. Thank you for supporting me by watching this video and my sweet friend Annie. She works very hard and she has a full-time job and still makes those beautiful crafts. Here's the witch's boots. If you enjoyed this video, I would very much appreciate a thumbs up because it helps my channel. YouTube sees that and they go, oh, she's doing a good thing here. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it with someone else or sharing it on your social media. It's very helpful to my channel and of course to Annie's channel. I would love it if you're new here, if you would subscribe. We have a lot of fun on this channel. And I'm always doing my best to bring you budget-friendly DIYs that are unique. You're going to find Annie's link for her video and for her channel in the description box below. So be sure you check her out. Tell her I sent you. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.